Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi, uh, welcome. Uh, in this session, we are going to discuss the theory of rational expectation and how theory of rational expectation going to play a role, a crucial role in determining the prices of stocks as well as alternative assets. And this theory of rational expectation is also called as the efficient market hypothesis and otherwise also called and also known as the theory of efficient capital markets as well. So, the theory of rational expectations is in contrast to the theory of adaptive expectations. So, according to the adaptive expectation, expectations are formed uh, from past experience only. This is one of the Keynesian proposition. And changes in expectations will occur slowly over time as data changes. However, according to theory of rational expectation, people use more than just past data to form their expectations and sometimes change their expectations quickly. In other words, just using the past data, the past experience, historical data, expectations are not just based on the extrapolation of this historical data, but the very recent information or whatever the all available information that all will be uh, imputed in while forming in information for while forming expectation and translating this expectation in uh, determining the prices of assets. So, the theory of rational expectation, the expectation will be identical to optimal forecast using all available information according to this theory. Even though a rational expectation uh, equals the optimal forecast using all available information, a prediction based on it may not always be perfectly accurate. It takes too much effort to make their expectations the best guess possible. And the best guess will not be accurate because the predictor is unaware of some relevant information. So, one of the things we need to remember here that the theory of rational expectation that is based on the proposition that the market participant they take into account all available information. Uh, the optimal then they will make an optimal forecast using all available information, but it is not necessary that the prediction based on it, it is going to be perfectly accurate. Then again, maybe because the economy is very dynamic, it includes so many socio-economic political factors. So, all this will be keep on changing. So, what are the new information coming that also will be feeding to the uh, optimal forecast. So, that means this will be keep on updating this that is the one of the proposition of uh, rational expectation. So, based on this let us make a formal statement. So, that means here uh, x raised to e is the expectation of the variable that is being forecast may be stock price uh, this is stock price and that is x c is going to be x or that is the optimal forecast using all available information. So, in this case, what the rational expectation theory say that uh, they say that the expectation of the variable, the stock price being forecast is going to be the stock price, the price of the stock based on may, that is may, 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 that is the optimal forecast using all available information, not just historical information. So, the incentives for equating expectations with the optimal forecast are especially strong in financial markets. We know that in these people markets, people with a better forecast of the future get rich. They make best uh, make 
more uh, profit or more capital gain when they make use of uh, all the available information. It's not only individual but also uh, different in the participant financial institution for example uh, banks, uh, insurance companies, pension funds, uh, whoever is playing in the market uh, all of them because this involves lots of stakes, it's not a small amount. So they are going to uh, get as much as information, they have actually incentives uh, equating expectation to optimal forecast because they know that uh, you know to get the maximum benefit uh, to get the maximum capital gain they have to make use of the best use of all the available information. So the application of the theory of rational expectation in this way uh, it is very important to financial market is thus particularly useful. Let us apply the rational expectation in a financial market uh, more importantly let us uh, apply this into the stock market. So we have seen in the uh, discussion previous session that uh, the rate of return from holding a security uh, equals the sum of capital gain on the security plus any cash payment. So in the case of bonds we have seen that the interest income plus the capital gain or in the case of uh, return in stock price we can see that the price difference that the PT plus 1 minus PT plus D. So this is the capital gain and this is the dividend right and this is the current stock price. So this is the R is going to be the price of the uh, is going to be the this that is the return rate of return on the security. Uh, this is a function of the difference in capital gain uh, PT plus uh, PT plus 1 minus PT PT plus T D divided by PT. So this is the R, this is the rate of return. So in this case let us apply how rational expectation plays a role. So we can see that at the beginning of the period we know PT and D, right? we know both the PT and D and PT plus 1 what is going to be the price of stock in the next year obviously you know that this is unknown and we must form an expectation of it. So in this case the expected return then we need to restate uh, the return we need to make uh, the expect, uh, expectation and similarly the price of stock in the next year uh, we need to make an expectation PE, P raised to E, T plus 1. So that expectation we need to make. So in this case what you can see that expectation of future prices are equal to the optimal forecast using all currently available information. So this E component uh, we actually need to equate with the optimal forecast not just the expectation of next year based on the historical data but using all available information we need to make OF that the optimal forecast. Then in that case uh, we are going to get this RE that the RE is going to be the return based on the expectation is going to be the return based on the optimal forecast. So supply and demand analysis states that RE equal to the equilibrium rate of equilibrium return R, R star that is the equilibrium return. So in this case we see that if we apply the rational expectation according to rational expectation theorem they say that the return based on the optimal forecast is going to be the return that is determined by supply and demand demand factors that the R star the equilibrium rate of return how so let us see how they explain it suppose that uh, let us start with a scenario obviously what we need that actually they are going to say that are uh, this part that is what we are going to say suppose the market uh, the current condition uh, is that uh, the optimal forecast the return based on the optimal forecast is greater than the return determined by demand and supply condition suppose in that scenario what is going to happen that means the market participants who are having uh, more information uh, they are having uh, lots of information or information about various aspects about the market about the present and future they see that uh, based on that they calculate that the return from this stock is going to be greater than what is determined by the uh, market that is the R the demand and supply. So in this case you know that those who are having this superior information about the market uh, they are going to demand these stocks and obviously you know that 
when the demand for this stock increases when the demand for this stock increases uh, you know that the rate of optimal forecast is declined how come because uh, we have seen in this formula that when the stock this pt when is keep increasing because of these factors we have seen that here uh, because of the huge demand those who are having to pay more information those who thinks that based on the optimal forecasting that uh, the current the return is less less the actually the market determined um, rate of uh, return is less than the optimal what the expectation based on the expectation so they, then accordingly what they will think that uh, the demand for stocks it is going to increase then when the pt increase then obviously you know that the capital gain finally the capital gain the gain that is from this holding this stock is going to decrease that is because the current itself this year itself the price of stock is going to uh, this is going to increase right so that uh, net difference that the um, uh, what is going the difference between the stock price next year uh, minus the stock price this year is this gap narrow down as a result you can see that the r going to decline so when the rof is greater than r star uh, you can see that finally the return of optimal forecast this one is going to decline so suppose take the alternative scenario what is the market participants think that the those who are based on the optimal forecast think that actually in this market the price should be less than the equilibrium that the return should be less than the equilibrium return determined by demand and supply then they, they, their demand for this stock decline demand for stock decline the price of t decline so you can see that here when the price of t declines then obviously you know that the this rate of return this is going to increase right because the capital gain the different different this capital gain increases then the return increases so in this way uh, if r uh, this one uh, suppose this r of is not equal to not equal to r star then due to these forces uh, you can see that uh, there is a tendency to reach to the final equilibrium the final equilibrium will be at this point that means uh, r of is going to be equal to the r star so in an efficient market what it says that actually all unexploited profit opportunities will be eliminated so ideally what they say that they argue that the propo proponents of this hypothesis argue that in the market there won't be any unexploited uh, profit opportunities always uh, market participants they uh, get, try to get all the information or they make best use of the all available information then accordingly the rate of return based on the optimal forecast is going to be equal to the market of return determined by demand and supply conditions so the efficient market hypothesis this is also another version of rational expectation hypothesis what they say that in an efficient market all unexploited profit opportunities will be eliminated and so according to them security prices are always correct and reflect uh, market fundamentals not only about the present that also is the future so all this one will be feeding to the uh, rational expectation and accordingly security prices are always correct and reflect market fundamentals of present and future and not everyone also they argue that uh, not everyone in the market must be well informed even uh, some some participants when they they have more information then accordingly this will be reflecting in the market uh, then this r of is going to be equal to r star so what are the implications of efficient market hypothesis so according to this market hypothesis efficient market hypothesis we can see that current prices in a financial market will be set so that optimal forecast of a securities return using all available information uh, equals securities equilibrium return so according to this hypothesis one of the implication of this hypothesis is going to be that one investment is as good as other because the securities prices are correct a second implication is that a securities price reflects all available information about intrinsic value of the security 
that means security prices are always correct and reflect market fundamentals of respective firms so when i say market fundamentals that means not only about the present of the market fund fundamentals but also of the future as well so all this will be fully getting reflected in the current security prices so an indicator of the financial health of the economy as well so the stock price the the prices of securities also can be considered as the indicator of financial health of the economy so we also we can see that security prices sometimes the managers of the firm they can also take uh, knowledge from the market with its its own security prices which is determined by demand and supply forces in the market they can also learn from it uh, security prices can be used by managers or firms to assess their cost of capital accurately these are the major implement implications so in this case let us ask do stock prices always rise when there is good news that means when we come to know that the economy is going to perform well in next year uh, the overall so political and economic conditions of the economy is going to improve then this stock this is a good news so my our question here is that do stock prices always rise when there is good news so the answer is that stock prices will respond to announcement only when the information being announced is new and unexpected when we are going to know that the next year uh, we already are aware that means uh, suppose the some new one news came today that actually the economy is going to perform very well or this particular firm, firm is going to perform very well but if this news is new then only uh, we can say that stock price will respond and if it is unexpected if this information is already we already know or already the market participants already made an expectation about it they anticipated or expected this news then this is not going to make uh, any impact on the uh, stock prices so in this case should you be skeptical of hot tips somebody say that okay this particular stock is going to outperform in the next year so should you be skeptical about hot tips so my answer here is that uh, actually no abnormal for profit exists that means there is no unexploited according to uh, this hypothesis the rational expectation theory there is no uh, unexploited profit opportunities in the market so there is no scope for any abnormal profit in the markets so in this case do stock prices let us uh, revisit this question do stock prices always rise when there is a good news so our answer is that stock prices will respond to announcement only when the information being announced is new and unexpected so according to the what are the, ma the main prescriptions given by efficient market hypothesis to the foreign investors is that uh, recommendation from investment advisors according to this hypothesis my point is according to this hypothesis uh, cannot help us outperform in the market right and a hot tip is a hot tip is probably information already contained in the price of stocks so stock prices respond to announcement only when the information is new and unexpected so one more one more higher proposition the prescription by this hypothesis is that a buy and hold strategy is the most sensible strategy for the small invest investors but not always let us also look for example how valuable are published reports by investment advisors so the information in newspapers and in the published reports of investment advisors is readily available to many participants is and is already reflected in the market prices so acting on this information will not yield abnormally high returns and on average so according to the empirical evidence for the most part confirms that recommendation from investment advisors cannot help us outperform the general market and however uh, the efficient market hypothesis is doesn't imply that financial markets are efficient some financial economists believe that uh, all prices are always correct and reflect market fundamentals so items have a direct impact 
on future income streams of the securities so financial markets are efficient however prices in markets like stock market are unpredictable this cause serious doubt on the stronger view that financial markets are efficient for example market bubbles and shocks like covid uh, 19 so because of that how uh, market performed before moving to this uh, let me also state that actually so one of the point that we need to little bit in a little bit more discussion according to this optimal forecast or uh, that in uh, based on our, uh, that the return based on the optimal forecast we say that this is going to be uh, based on the return the based on the optimal forecast is going to be the return of demand and supply forces what this uh, hypothesis also say that there is no unexploited uh, profit opportunities uh, in the market for example taking the case of stock price suppose during covid even after five six months of the on start of onset of covid you can see that india's stock market began to perform well so immediately after for example in the month of jan uh, 22 uh, nearly March, April, April 2020, we know that uh, the performance of Indian market, Indian stock market almost crashed. But you can see that after a couple of months, uh, still COVID pandemic was continuing, the Indian stock market began to outperform, right? After a couple of months, why? Because then at that time, you can see that the invention of uh, vaccines and all came and uh, people came to know the, our understanding about the um, COVID uh, that also improved and people it became a new normal and what they expect that or maybe within a couple of months the pandemic will be over then the economy will bounce back so then you can see that because of this the stock price for example here in this formula we can see that the stock price uh, in the next year is going to increase when they see that the stock price uh, in the next year is going to increase uh, because the economy is going to do well after a year one, two, three, or maybe after a couple of years, when all this information will be uh, influencing the, uh, your current stock price, uh, what is going to happen that if you see that the stock price is going to increase in year one or year two, uh, that means the economy is going to perform well, um, then because of that there is going to be an increase in the stock of that company now itself so as a result the stock the pt uh, this is going to increase so this difference so as a result the capital gain that means the difference between pt plus 1 minus pt is going to decline that means pt because the we can we see so here that in the future when the economy is going to perform well or the firm uh, the future is going to be bright uh, when you see that the future of this uh, firm is going to be optimistic or, or going to be bright uh, going to be good then as a result the demand for this stock is going to increase now itself so because of that the difference between this uh, decrease that means if the uh, actually based on that actually in the future actually this firm is going to perform well that is what the our forecast optimal forecast because of that the demand for these firms stocks uh, increases in the present itself so this will be already as a result the present stock price the price of the stock increases in the present the current period itself so as a result the difference between uh, this already increases it reduces this difference between pt plus 1 minus pt uh, reduces in contrast if we see that the economy is going to perform badly in the future then obviously you know that uh, the pt this is the going to be reduced because the, the reason is that the demand for that particular stock is going to decline so in that way the gap is going to increase so in order to understand how security markets the finance market works these days several the uh, another area uh, is also another area of uh, finance is uh, well discussed that is called behavioral finance that means the role of social science also required in understanding how stock prices or the security prices are determined 
so in this case the role of social science like anthropology psych psychology sociology etc are being uh, incorporated so in this case uh, one one psychological aspect is called the loss aversion that means the lack of short selling because that means when the people uh, in a society in an economy if they are outweighed with uh, uh, the people with the lo loss aversion uh, in this case you can see that this will causing overpriced stocks uh, because uh, lack of short selling uh, this will be explained by loss aversion Another is overconfidence. Uh, overconfidence means a large trading volume may be explained by investors overconfidence. So the stock market's market uh, bubbles may be explained by uh, overconfidence and social contagion as well. And also there is a difference between beliefs and facts. So what we studied in the rational expectation that actually the facts the people take into account all the um, available information then they made make an optimal forecast and because of that the market's fundamentals will be reflected uh, in the stock price or the prices of security. But actually the beliefs also matters. No, they don't, not always the beliefs is going to be uh, a true reflection of the facts. One thing actually most people, uh, this is actually sometimes they have their own uh, kind of overconfidence or beliefs about the markets. One example we can give for example somebody is driving and somebody is sitting just in the car and some driver is driving. So, so when someone is driving then he will be thinking that he has more confidence on his driving and he thinks that no accident is going to happen that is just a belief that he thinks that he is overconfident. But when the same person sitting on a taxi uh, someone is driving uh, that the driver is driving and he is just sitting and he sometimes think that uh, the probability there is a probability of uh, some kind of accident. Right. When you look at the probability in both scenario, when he himself drives the car and when he is just sitting uh, in the car when someone else is driving, then obviously there will be there will be some difference because he himself think that uh, he is more confident about his driving and because of that you can see that he think that there is less probability of uh, uh, accident. So this actually will reflect in the market as well. In the markets. Uh, people they think that uh, those who are in investors, those who are demanding the stocks, he thinks that he knows more information, he has more confidence in the market. So that actually like that there are a large number of buyers and uh, participants, market participants. So all of them having this kind of psychological, these aspects, this will be reflecting uh, in their behavior. Then this will be also affecting uh, the market bubbles, the fluctuations in the markets. So accordingly we can see that uh, psychology of trading, so here actually you can see that uh, 14 stages of investors emotion, all these will be affecting in the market behavior. So look at for example optimism, so if individuals are over represented with optimism, so even something happen, even covid kind of shocks happen, they think that oh, really this will be overcome within a couple of months, so no need of uh, panic selling. Right. So, that kind of optimistic behavior, people with optimistic behavior, if uh, market is over represented with optimism then uh, the market won't be clashing. Right. So, similarly people with the excitement, some hot news uh, they respond, uh, similarly all this um, uh, psychological, psychology, all this aspect, anxiety, denial, all this going to reflect in the uh, market behavior. So accordingly we can see that what we see the stock market, how stock market performs, sometimes bear, sometimes bulls and all this also will be in addition to the ration, rational expectation whatever we have seen in addition to this all the psychological aspects also uh, work into context. Mm -hmm. So thank you.